Good morning, church. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? It's an amazing time that we're in. And why don't we just greet each other? Greet someone that you haven't said hello to in a while. Greet someone that you don't know. Give them a high five, fist bump. Give them a holy kiss. It's good to show ourselves friendly. But the real reason we are here is to lift up the name of Jesus. That all powerful name. And I want us to start worship. I want us to lead worship by lifting up the name of Jesus, by giving a hallelujah by giving a hand clap, by praising his name. I can't hear you, church. Because there should be some hallelujahs in the house. There should be some praise God. There should be some thank you, Jesuses. You see, I can hear the drums worshiping God. Is there a hand clap for the name of Jesus? Because I don't want to lift them up by myself. Because I, I want to say, thank you, Jesus for what he done for me yesterday, what he done for me the day before. But I want to say thank you for what he's about to do in me and through me this morning. So why don't you thank Jesus for that? Thank Jesus for the worship that he's going to give us. Thank the Lord for his presence that is already in this place. Why don't you thank him for the roaring lion of Judah that is encircling this house? Because as we worship, the lion roars. And as we worship, his presence will fill this place. And it will overflow out of Dudley down the road. And it's going to touch places and people that don't know the name of Jesus. And they're going to wonder what's happened. But it's going to be because of you. It's going to be because of your worship. It's going to be because you are lifting up his name. So why don't you continue to praise him? Continue to magnify him? continue to experience that freedom that only Jesus can bring. No other name can bring that freedom. No other name can bring healing. No other name can bring peace. No other name can bring power. Ha. Thank you, Jesus.
Margaret brought that word about the sword. I saw the Lord put swords in people's hands. And this cloud of like depression, whatever. The Lord says, I'll give you praise as a weapon that conquers all anxiety. The Lord says, when you wield your sword, when you cut off all that's been hindering you in this season, because the Lord is giving you a choice.
my presence and my glory is like a pressure cooker. Whatever you think has been holding you down is no longer holding you down. The presence of my glory in you will burst that lid. We'll break that lid. Lord, we thank you that you have broken our lid. You know, I think sometimes it's really important to acknowledge what's going on in the room, you know? And in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, it says, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and, you, and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, that's me, and has made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. That's us. We can reign. We can wield our swords and we can take dominion because of his blood over us this morning. We are purchased this morning. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne, high and lifted up, reigning over all. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne, high and lifted up, reigning over all. You came.
in this place because we've reached a place of breakthrough. Can you feel it? Something's shifted. I don't know. Listen, we've never had kids up here with banners before. We've never had that. But something happened. There's a verse in Psalms that says, Out of the mouths of babes, you have ordained praise. And I'm telling you, there is a breakthrough. It's tangible right now. But we're going to continue praising because I don't want to cut it short. But I just saw something in, your, in my spirit that I want us to activate. You see, it's really good to come to church and to shout and to have a good time and to feel better. But I want you to know that something is turning in the spirit realm when we do this. Something can shift for your life. Turn to the neighbor next to you and say, something can shift for your life. Things can change this morning. And what I saw, we've been, we've been hearing. Something can shift. We've been hearing prophetic words about swords, about breakthrough, about victory. And I just felt that there are people in the room this morning who you are waiting for a breakthrough. I know that there's people in this room this morning, you are waiting for a breakthrough in your health. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call some people out. I know that there's kidneys in this room. I'm believing in the Spirit of God that there are new kidneys that are released this morning. And I'm using that as an example because there are people in this room, you are waiting for your breakthrough. And here's what we're gonna do. I want, if you are waiting for your breakthrough, I wanna invite you to the front. And as a worship team, as a body of Christ, we are gonna roar the sound of praise over you as you stand here at the front. That's what I'm believing, that's what I'm believing. And it's gonna see things change. You are in this place this morning and you are waiting for relationships to, to come to a place of breakthrough. Now is your moment, come to the front. You're in this place this morning and you are waiting for finances to come into alignment. This is your moment, come to the front. I don't know what it is else you're going through, but I'm sensing in my spirit. I've never done this before. But when God moves, He takes us into places that we've never been before. When God moves, we do things we've never done before. If you're waiting for a breakthrough, this is your moment. This is your moment. Come down to the front. Come down to the front. Situations at work, they're going to shift. Situations at your workplace, they're going to turn around. Let's sing this out. Great are you, Lord, whatever part you want to do. It's your breath. It's your breath. of three I want you at the back to roar over everyone in the front I want the worship team to roar over it but here's here's the thing friends you who've responded your roar is needed this morning just like Joshua walked around the walls of Jericho seven times there was a shout and every wall came down so I want your voice to be a sword this morning the sword it's not that we've done something that we're clever or special Here's the sword. It's the praise of the Lord Almighty. That's the sword that's in our, our mouths this morning. So on the count of three, are you ready? We're going to roll. One, two, three. Let's go.
place this morning because the Bible says he inhabits our praises. Don't stop praising him. As we praise him, the breakthrough continues. There's been one level of breakthrough, but I believe God says there's more. He is a God of abundance. don't you bless the person next to you and tell them you are a product of breakthrough you are a product of the most high worship team you are products of breakthrough from God dude you are a product of breakthrough declare that to the person next to you as you go back to your seat you are a product of breakthrough. Breakthrough. This is a breakthrough moment. The presence of God is here. And he has broken us out of something and into something new. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we serve a God who has many characteristics and one of his characteristics is abundance. He doesn't do things by halves. He doesn't make mistakes. His timing is perfect in every situation sometimes we don't understand it the old time church used to say we'll understand it in the sweet by and by but he's a God of abundance and we've been and we've experienced that part of his nature this morning He's been abundant in the way that he has stepped in. How he's inhabited our praise this morning. He's been on the drums. He's been on the guitars. He's been on the voices. He's been on your voice. And as we have lifted him up and declared the name of Jesus and said the name Jesus and said, Father, he has inhabited that, that moment. He is the very breath that we breathe. And if you was to just go, ah, he's in that breath, his spirit. You know, last week Trevor was talking about, um, he's talking about Ryan being a bird watcher. He called him a twitcher. And I thought about, um, if anyone's been to Singapore, there's a bird park over there. It's called the Jerong Bird Park. And as Trevor was talking about the birds and how Ryan was able to identify the various types of birds, I thought about that bird park. I've been, to, I've been there many times and I've seen the absolute beauty of birds. There's over three and a half thousand species of bird just in that one environment. That speaks of a God that who's abundant in his creation. When we look at the uniqueness of, look at the people around you. We're all unique in our own special way. We all have characteristics of uniqueness that set us apart, make us different from the person that's next to us. That's the abundance of God in our lives. And it's there every day from the moment, well, from before you were born, because it needed you together to be unique before you were conceived. And this is about offering because we serve a God of abundance and what he has done he's placed abundance within us because we were made in his image and his likeness so we reflect the characteristics of God 
You see, we often believe in the other characteristics of God. We believe in His grace. We believe in His mercy. We believe in His joy. We often ask for His peace. We ask for His kindness, His goodness, His faithfulness, His gentleness, and self-control. These are all fruits of the Spirit that is given to us. But they came out of Him and He's given that into us because he's an abundant God and there's no end to the amount that he flows into us as we need but what God does he works on trades as we give into him he gives into us but he started it first he started it with Jesus imagine being Jesus in heaven enjoying the splendors of heaven and I can't imagine what the conversation would be like, but Jesus, you got to go to earth. That place where there's a lot of sin. And what I need you to do, Jesus, is die for them because I love them so much. And when you die for them, as long as they believe, I'm going to give them eternal life. That's a trade. And that was the ultimate trade that God did. This is why the scripture says, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only, his one and only son. That whoever believes, and that's the point of trade. When we believe, we receive. But we can't outgive God. But the scriptures tells us in no absolute terms that when we give, God always responds. In Malachi 3, it says, The Lord Almighty says, And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. That means the floodgates can be shut. But when we give into God, the floodgates open. And I just want you to imagine that above you there's a gate and then this, this the abundance of heaven is being held back but God says each time you give I'm going to open up that floodgate and he goes out to say and pour out so much blessing there'll be not one room enough to store it that's a promise and he goes on to promise even more and he says, I will prevent pests from devour devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. And God goes on, and Jesus goes on to say in Luke 6, he said, give and it will be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. That speaks of abundance. And this is the God that we serve. This is the God that we've been praising and worshipping this morning. This is the God that has touched every single one of us. So we get a chance. We get to decide whether or not we live in abundance. And God says we decide that by giving. Because he would respond to our giving. So here's what I want you to do. Grab your envelopes. If you're watching online, you'll be able to go to the giving page. But the Bible goes on to say that God loves a cheerful giver. So I want us to come with joy. I want us to come rejoicing, just like how we were at the altar, praising God. It's a continuation of our worship. And just like this morning, when we praised him and God responded, he's going to respond again and again and again because that's his promise to us. He's going to give us all the things that we have in Oxford and all the things that we need. And the breakthrough is going to continue. Let's worship him and bring our offerings to him and see what he would do.
why don't we all stretch our hands forward? We're going to pray over this offering. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your abundant favor. Lord, for every giver, bless them, Father. Go beyond and do what only you can do. Lord, multiply this money. Multiply healings. Multiply salvations. Multiply hope. Multiply courage. Multiply peace. Multiply your power in us. Multiply your influence, God. You're a multiplicator of all things good. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. Give God a hand clap. There's never a wrong time to do it. So, on your chairs, you see there's some cards. And there's three announcements that I just want to bring to your attention. So, today, after the meeting, there's all teams training that will take place in the Transformation Center. And if you're not currently signed up to a team, still turn up. And somebody will find you a home. <laughs> yeah. Janet, in fact, if you, uh, Janet, if you stand up. So if you're not currently signed up to a team, if you see this young lady here, she will help you find a home where you can serve. And there's a blessing in serving. Believe you me, God responds to service. So, Monday the 26th of June at 7 p.m., we've got a prophetic encounter with Cindy Jacobs. If you've not heard of her, come. And if you're coming, come early. It's going to be full. It's going to be full. So don't allow yourself to be disappointed. Come early. And also it will be available on, online. We've also got some baptisms taking place. Now, if you're not baptized and you want to be baptized... If you're not baptized and haven't thought about being baptized, come and see Ryan and Anna. It will change your life. That's all I can say. And those who are baptized, can you give me a shout to testify? Okay. We were nearly there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so um, the last one, which is also on your card, is the Big Church Family Lunch. Now, this is taking... Who doesn't like food? Uh. Oh, doesn't? All right. Well, Tom, we've got extra space, yeah? <laughs> if you love food, let me hear you make a shout. Wow. So, 12.30, Sunday the 2nd of July. Bring your favourite dish. And if you haven't got a favourite dish, ask someone next to you, what's your favourite dish? Then that can give you a hint of what you might want to bring. You can buy it or make it, but bring something along. And those are the announcements for today. As I said, it's all on your chair. Yeah. So um, I'm going to welcome Ryan and Anna to come up. Give them a clap as they come. Thanks so much, Darren. Hasn't it been good already? His presence is here. I just want to uh, reiterate and say a massive welcome as well to all our visitors, guests, maybe first, second, third time coming along. It's really good to have you. You're so welcome here. This is uh, what we think the house of God should be like, family, yeah. and God's presence is here. And I feel like at this point, um, I've got a, w a word to share with you, uh, and I, but I feel like God's done so much in our lives already, hasn't he? And that's so good. So welcome to all the visitors. Um, Venusia, don't go too far because there's going to be your moment in a minute. Um, what I just wanted to say as well, just in that time of transition, we sent our kids through to the Transformation Center where they've got Kids Church and our youth, those between the age of 11 and 18, have also gone through to the prayer room. So Tony and Melia are leading them today, which is an absolute joy. So Lord, would you bless all the generations yes, who meet yes. here today? 
And what are we about to do this morning, Anna? We are looking forward to joining people to the body here at Revival Fires. It's mm. been such a special morning. They've come in. We've prophesied over them. Our, our GPS students prophesied over them, gave them words of encouragement. And now we're here. They're ready. Mm. <laughs> so what, what we're going to do, we're going to just call out the names of the people who are making a commitment to join Revival Fires. Um, let me, we say this every time, but I can't say it enough. The day that you gave your life to Jesus Christ was the day that you became a member of his body. Yes, God. You are already members of the body yep. of Christ. But what happens in the church is that you find a place where you want to put down roots. Mm -hmm. You find a place where you want to belong, where you want to get discipled mm -hmm. and grow. And that's what we want this to be about. We want to celebrate people who've made that choice. And we as a leadership are also making a choice uh, and a decision towards all of you. So what I want to do, I'm going to call out the names of these people. I want you to give them a big shout and a big clap. And as they come down, come and stand here at the front, okay? Facing the church. Is that cool? <laughs> so Becca, where's Becca? <laughs> Victoria. Taka. Come, Victoria. Alicia. Julian. <laughs> Michaela and Nevea. Loreen, that's it. Grace, Grace is here. Venusia and Prath, and also baby Gabriella. This is amazing. Here they come, here they come. Isn't this great? And it's our greatest joy to welcome all of these into the life of the family here, into the life of the church. I want to say to you, welcome to family. Let this be a place where you know belonging, where you know the blessing of God upon your life. Let this be a place where you know relationships growing. And isn't it great to see two young babies as well this time? Oh, they're gorgeous. So, so exciting. So we are going to just make a commitment to each other. And, and what we like to do, and it might be different to other places, but it's something special that we believe we like to do. And the reason is that God wants us to celebrate endings and celebrate beginnings. You know, the way that we begin a season really marks the way that we step into that season and the fullness and the fruitfulness that God wants to put upon our lives in this season. And so we're going to ask every one of you, would you stand up? And we're going to, Anna's going to do this. Do you want to do this? I'm going to do it. Okay. We're going to ask you a couple of questions and just pray things through. And your answer is, we do. Is that good? So we embrace you, every one of you, into the life of the church at Revival Fires here today. We will seek to love you and to nurture you. And we will be a spiritual protection and a spiritual covering over you. So do you willingly and freely place yourself under the care of the leadership here? And do you seek to walk in integrity and openness as we seek to walk together in the Father's love? Now we, the leadership, Along with our life group leaders, will always seek your good. And with God's wisdom and help, we will release you into God's plan and purpose so that you will fulfill all that God has for your life. And everybody said, Amen. Why don't you give them a clap of welcome? Come, if some of you want to come down and just embrace them into the life of the church, I know there's other leaders here and it's just been such a joy. All right, feel free to sit down. I love the summer. I love seeing everybody's uh, colorful outfits when we come into church. Just tap the person next to you and say, you look good today. <laughs> and all of these new people who have become part of the life here at the church Listen, you might want to go up to some of them and say, what are you doing for lunch today? Invite them around, begin to hang out, begin to get to know uh, each other. 
And I want to also say we've got Heart to Heart today after the meeting. And Heart to Heart really is an opportunity for us to spend some time with some of the visitors, some of the guests. There's a lot of people around. There's a lot of things happening. It's not always easy to make time to connect and develop a relationship. So what we want to do as a leadership team is make space every month where we welcome you. So there's some snacks, there's some coffee. That's not just the, the hook and the connection in our promise. It's what God wants to do among us. And we, are, we want to get a chance to meet you, to get to know a little bit more about you, and to invite you to keep taking your next steps on the journey that God has for your life. So what you've seen this morning isn't just the culmination of the journey either. This is just the beginning. Our heart is to see everybody who comes to Revival Fires equipped to minister. To minister in the areas of your family life. To minister in the areas of your work life. To minister in the areas of marketplaces, of schools, wherever God has you. Think about that place. It's so good that we're here together on a Sunday. It's great to be family together. It's great to encounter God's presence. But what are you doing tomorrow? Your Monday. That is the place where we want to equip you to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. That's the place where you've been called to minister. You have a voice. Oh, you were very lively earlier. Let me say that again. You, you have a voice. You have a message. You have a testimony. You have a story. Some of you think, well, Ryan, at the moment, I just have a bit of a mess. Good news. God turns messes into messages. That's what he does. That's what I'm believing even this morning, this this shout that we released, God is going to do something in your life. A few years ago, let me tell you a testimony of what I believe happens at shouts, and I've never done this before, but the reason I felt God saying it is because I have a testimony of what's happened. Um, I, I had a growth once on my hand, and it was gross. It was a gross growth. It was disgusting. I, I'm a guitarist. I like to play guitar, and every time I look at my hand, there was this golf ball sort of thing hanging on my wrist. Doctors amongst here, I know, faith, wisdom, you could probably tell me what it was. And, and it was, because I went to the doctor and they said, well, this, this, that, the other. And I was, I'd always come to the Lord, Lord, would you heal me? Lord, would you heal me? Lord, would you heal me? And there was a moment in a, in a praise time where there was a shout that was released. And I heard the still, small voice of God whisper in my ear. Anyone else hear the voice of God? Isn't it a wonderful thing? Do you know how to identify it? Often it'll, t it'll invite you, and it's always an invitation, invite you into an area of, of being uncomfortable. Invite you to step into something new. And he said, Ryan, there is a shout of praise in your mouth today that can defeat this. And I could have put on my carnal logic reasoning mind. Well, the doctor said this is what I need. I need an operation. The only thing that will remove this is cut out. The doctor said this. And I've got nothing wrong with doctors. Don't hear, this, don't hear that from what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about the small, small, small voice of God that comes to break through impossible situations because he makes all things possible. We don't always know how he does it. And so I decided to take a step of faith because every time God's voice speaks to you, here's how else you can recognize it. His, he wants you to respond in faith. That's how you know it's God's voice. Ryan, I'm hearing, I'm hearing ideas and thoughts in my head. How do I know it's God's voice? Well, is faith a key ingredient? Because then it's God's voice. He said, Ryan, shout in faith. And I mean, we were down in a much smaller building. I think I let out a really loud shout. Everyone looked across at me thinking, is he being delivered from demons? <laughs> ah! And I sat down. Of course, I checked my hand, and it, the lump was still there. And I thought, oh, well, at least I was obedient. I think that's a good lesson even for some of us today. We, we hear God's voice, but we don't always act in obedience. You know what the sign of success is in our life? It's where you're obedient to what God said. So I went to sleep that night, and the story's not finished. Anna's leaning in. Ryan, don't leave them on a ledge. <laughs> I went to bed that night. I woke up in the morning, uh, took a big stretch, looked at my hand, and the lump was gone. <laughs> totally gone. Absolute miracle. It was there before, and it was removed. Isn't God good? So, listen, we shouted over some of you. Didn't it feel good to shout anyway? Didn't it feel good? Oh, man, I loved it. I felt like oh, cleared out all the cobwebs, spring cleaning is happening. 
But I'm believing with faith over your lives that those situations that you responded for today, God is going to begin to bring about a turnaround. We preached last week. I know what the time is. Don't worry. It's, it's 10 to 12. Um, we try and finish at half past 12. We try. We can but try. <laughs> Remember, I'm African. I'm going to play the African card. <laughs> African timeline. Here we go. No. I'm actually really enjoying these short preaches. God does so much. He's like, Ryan, you don't have to over-prepare today. I've got this. I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to minister to your body. I'm going to minister to the church this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I would much rather have you touch our lives than just have to come and listen to some young guys. Music. Okay, it's a good, it's a good word. I've got a good word for you. <laughs> this is Anna, my wife, if you don't know. Um, she's telling me I still did over-prepare, so we'll, we'll see. I'm ready. But here, what we talked about last Sunday, we've come through Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. It wasn't, a, it wasn't just a one thing that happened. It wasn't a flash in the pan. We're living in the power of the Holy Spirit's continual pouring out in our lives. But there's moments when we come and we look at the Bible story that God can teach us a timeline. And He can remind us what we are going through. And He can bring back to um, to our daily lives and make it really clear what it is that he's wanting to do in this time and in this season. And the revelation that Peter had when he stood up and when he preached on the day of Pentecost was this, Jesus is Lord. And we talked about the fullness, the culmination, the coming together and the completion of Jesus' whole life. In fact, of the, the 5,000 years of God's redemptive plan with humanity came up to this point where at last... God had defeated the, the devil in the heavenly realms. God had defeated the devil on the earth realm through Jesus Christ. And God has now defeated the devil in the grave through the cross of Jesus Christ. And we can come into a moment of complete fullness in our lives. There is a moment where God can bring and immediately, say suddenly. suddenly. God comes, and he wants, he comes to us in moments where he wants to suddenly break through. And we talked about this, that there's not really any overnight success. Sometimes it feels like things happen. I read a wonderful story this week. Anyone know of an artist by the name of Picasso? Yeah. Amazing, amazing artist. And when he was still alive, he was sat in a coffee shop in Italy. And a woman was in the coffee shop and she recognized who he was. This was the Picasso. Have you ever been like that? You can't just start nudging the person you have a coffee with. It's Picasso. I'm sure it's Picasso. That happened to us in Dudley of all places. It wasn't Picasso that we saw though. We were having a lunch at Bistro, and there was a famous actor, famous BBC actor, okay, a guy who'd done like um, all the nativity scenes and all of the, um, uh, yeah, his name was Jason. What, it was um, in the line of duty. Any of you guys like those kind of shows? And he was in the coffee shop in Dudley, and, and I was with Anna, like whispering, oh my goodness, what's, it's, it's that guy sort of pointing, sort of hushing, and you know, Trevor, look at this, it's someone that we know. You know, he had no shame. So this guy recognized that we were pointing and trying to, you know, call him out. And he came over. What a gentleman. And he said, hi, my name's Jason. Uh, would any of you like any selfies? You know, we got some selfies with him. And we got talking with him. He wasn't in Dudley on um, holiday or tourism. He was actually shooting a show in the town hall. And it, it was really cool. So... We've all been in places when we've seen someone famous. And this lady was in this coffee shop. And Picasso was sat across the table having his espresso. And so she goes up to this guy. And she says, excuse me, you're Picasso? And he says, yes, I am. She hands him a napkin. And she says, go on, draw something. So he does. He grabs a pen and he draws something. And he goes to give it to the lady. And it's, you know, you know Picasso. One line, consistent, beautiful, really expressive, abstract. He gives it to the lady, and she goes to take it out of his hand, but he doesn't let go of it. And he says, and this will be X amount of money. And the lady is horrified. And the lady says to him, how dare you? How could you charge me that much for something that only took you 10 seconds? And she said, yes, my dear. He said, yes, my dear. It, but it didn't just take me 10 seconds. I've spent my entire life perfecting my art. So I've come to the point where in 10 seconds I can culminate and I can complete something that I've spent my lifetime working on. There is no such thing as an overnight success. 
God is working in our lives steadily, moment by moment. And I believe this morning was another one of those moments. You never know. It could have been for you a moment when all of the steadiness has come together and you have a suddenly and there's a moment of breakthrough. That's what we call miracles. There has been a steadiness in your life that you've been going, conversation after conversation, text message after text message, email after email, meeting after email and rela- with relationships in your life. And I'm believing for you to come and stand up in faith and say, today, God, let this be a moment where my steadilies have worked for me a suddenly in your name. So this lady paid the money for the napkin. And she actually sold it for even more than she paid Picasso for. But the point is what I've made, that there are moments in our lives where God works suddenly. So would you, would you put the scripture up? Here's what we're going to just focus this morning at. It's from Acts chapter 2, verse 34. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Keep going. There, for David, no, keep next next line, next line, next scripture. Therefore, you let all Israel, sorry, go back. Go back, I was still reading. There we go. Let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Jesus is Lord. He's the Lord in the heavens. He's the Lord on the earth. He's the Lord under the earth. He's the Lord in all of our lives. Jesus is Lord, and we are coming to a place where we want to make sure that God is steadily working out in our lives the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I want to link this with an amazing uh, character in the Old Testament. His name is Joshua. You know, his name, Joshua, is actually the Aramaic version of Jesus. Jesus is the Greek version of the name Joshua, and it means God will save. So Joshua and Jesus, they kind of had the same name, but there's a number of things in Joshua's life that I want to bring out to us as God has got us on this journey of steadily. You can put it like this if you want a title this morning. It's what to do in your until moments. Paul quoted David in Psalm 110 when he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The actual, ver- the actual words is Yahweh, Jehovah, said to my Adonai. And David is being a prophet here. He's looking up and he's seeing something and he's seeing God the Father speaking to God the Son, Jesus. Sit at my right hand until. Say until. <laughs> sit at my right hand until. I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And we've been praying for this over the all, over all of you this week. Anna and I, if you church watching online as well, you're part of this. Everyone here, we've been praying for you this week that God would make your enemies a footstool for your feet. That you would know what it is this week to come into such a fullness of freedom. And Jesus has just done that already with the, the expression of praise and worship this morning. He's culminating what he's been doing in the week. But what do we do in our moments of until? What do we do between the steadiness and the suddenly? What do we do between the progressive plan that God is working out in our lives and the immediately? And there's a couple of key points I want to give to you from the life of Joshua. You see, Joshua says this in Joshua chapter 10, verse 24. When they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all of the men of Israel and said to the army and the commanders who had come with him, Come here and put your feet on the necks of the kings. I think I need to just give you a little bit of an understanding into this before. I think you're like, I want to celebrate. But that guy had his his foot on someone else's neck. Okay. The Old Testament now speaks figuratively into what the Lord wants to do spiritually in our lives. Have you got that? The Bible's very clear. We no longer battle against flesh and, but against powers, principalities, and spirits in the high places. Now, when I'm talking about your enemies at your feet, (laughs) I don't want you to go into the office on Monday, okay? (laughs) I'd go to your boss (laughs) and say, "Uh, could you just tie my shoelace? (coughs) You know. Get your foot on his neck. I'm not talking about that, okay? You could just take that. Some of you are like, Ryan, that sounds exciting. (laughs) Some of you are like, Ryan, that could be exactly what I need. No, it's not. You need to pray for your bosses, okay? 
You need to pray for the people in leadership. But figuratively, spiritually, what God is saying is that there is a place of victory that he wants to bring us into where the things that have kept you in bondage in the past are now underneath your feet. Where the things that have kept you in restriction in the past are now underneath your feet. Where the things that you might have struggled over, stumbled over, tripped over in the past are now underneath your feet. And if you ever go to, to walk up a step and... Um, I need to stop wearing skinny jeans because it's not cool anymore. But walk up a step and because your jeans are too tight, you're like, you stumble, then you trip. It's just me. Okay. God wants to remove the places even where you've been stumbling. There's been things that you say, I can get over this. I can get over this. That something you get faces you again. You say, no, I can get over this. But you keep seeming to struggle and to stumble. Even those things God wants to put as the enemy underneath your feet. So here we're going to read about Joshua. Joshua spent 40 years with God's people in the wilderness because the rest of God's people didn't have the faith and the vision to step into what God had given them. There were 12 spies when they came out of Egypt. They were entering the promised land. There's 12 spies that went out. You remember their names, Joshua and Caleb. And two out of the 12 came back and said, oh, this land is good. Oh, God is giving us this inheritance. Oh, the fields are amazing. The fruit is incredible. God is giving us this land. But the other 10 said, oh, man, the land is good, but there's giants. Oh, man, they saw the enemies, didn't they? You see, Joshua saw the fruit. Joshua saw the promise. Joshua saw the potential. The other 10, they saw the problems. They saw the enemies. They saw the giants. And it says that they became, in their eyes, how they viewed themselves. They became, they said, we are grasshoppers. And they became as grasshoppers. So Joshua was a man of faith. He was a man who was going to go through, but he had to wait in his until for 40 years. And as we read here, Joshua chapter 10, this is a moment of fulfillment. Fulfillment? Fulfillment. This is a moment of fullness. This is a moment where Joshua is reaching the victory and the inheritance that God had always said he could come, he could have. And so this is why it's such a wonderful moment. Come here. Put your feet on the necks of these kings. So Joshua didn't even do it. He got all of the army commanders to come and to experience what victory felt like. God wants you to experience what victory feels like in your life. God wants you to know what it is to have your feet on the neck of the enemy. God, know, God wants you to experience what it is to walk this week in moments of fullness. Because Jesus has died, was crucified, resurrected, and ascended. And he has poured out his Holy Spirit on us. And we can know this victory. So they came forward and they placed their feet on their necks. And Joshua said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies that you are going to fight. You see, what they were experiencing in that moment, Joshua was prophesying even into their future. We're in a moment of completion, but it's still going to become another until because there's still more battles that you have to fight. But I want you to remember what it feels like right now to be in a moment of victory. Isn't it interesting what he said there? Be strong and courageous. Listen to me. Do not be afraid. Those were the exact same words God spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 when God was telling Joshua, now is the time. 40 years is over. The, uh, the, the steadiness has come to an end. Your moment of suddenly is upon you. So, God is at work in your life, steadily and suddenly, the, and progressively and immediately. This is the time where we are going to move into fullness. So, just a couple of points I want to share with you. I want to give you hope. I want to impart hope to you this morning. I want to impart vision to you this morning. I want to impart courage to you this morning. I believe that fear is one of the enemies that God is going to slay this morning. And there's a couple of things that are going to fall at your feet when you recognize and enthrone Jesus as Lord. And the first is this, to not miss God in the mundane. 40 years of Joshua in the wilderness, tent after tent after tent. I mean, summer's upon us. Isn't it amazing? Come on, summer is upon us. It's so good. Who wants to go camping? I don't want to go camping, sorry. I love summer, but I don't like staying in tents, okay? It, 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 you get wet. You wake up in the morning, even if it didn't rain outside, there's like condensation on the inside. There's no toilets. There's no hot water. I'm sorry if you like camping. You know, you, you can go camping. 
Joshua had to go 40 years in a tent. You like camping. Would you like to spend 40 years in a tent? <laughs> yeah, my point's been proved. Thank you very much. Here he is going through the mundane, putting the tent up, taking the tent down, walking it through, doing all those things. How do you live with the weight of the vision and the call when you're going through the mundane? Let me tell you, you get very aware of every little victory that God is giving you. God is giving you little victories in everything that you go through. I want you to have eyes to see. I want you to begin to see what God is doing. Just like David, he's shepherding the sheep. And, and the, his father has sent him out into the fields. And he doesn't even think that he's one of his sons. And he's, he's just shepherding the sheep. But little did David know that every single sheep that he learned how to look after, God was teaching him how to be a king. Little did David know that every single wolf that was coming to attack the sheep, God was teaching him how to fight giants. Little did David know that every bear that was coming in, God was teaching him how to be a man of strategy to win a war, how to, how to guide and lead a nation. How did David get so good at being a king? He didn't waste his mundane moments. Where he was right there at that point, he went through it. How did Joshua get so good at, at leading God's people to the place where he could have all his, his commanders defeat all five kings in one go? He didn't waste a moment. May you know what it is just to go through. I want to call them karate kid moments. Have you ever seen this? I'm showing you my age now. There was a great movie called Karate Kid. And he, all he wanted to do was to train to fight. Yeah. And he went to Mr. Miyagi. And all Mr. Miyagi did was teach him, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. And this kid is getting angry, frustrated. Don't you know the potential in me? All I want to do is, no, wax on, wax off. Until he finally gets to the ring and he realizes, and he fights. He realizes that all those moments of waxing on and waxing off were strengthening his muscles, getting him in the right position. Let me tell you, your moments that you're in right now do not lose heart. Keep going through your moments. God is strengthening you for victory. There's a, there's a music file down the side of the stage. You might not know it, and it's, it's got two heavy metal drawers. And in it is every song that we've ever sung since 1994. Filed by first line of the song. There's a lot of songs. One of my jobs when I started here at Revival Fires, I was a 19-year-old boy. One of my jobs was to organize the files. I wanted to be a worship leader. And Sharon, who was the worship leader at the time, she says, great, Ryan. Here's your first job. Organize the files. Wax on, wax on. And I'm there pulling the files, taking them out. Week in, week out, the worship team will lead an amazing set. It was great worship this morning, guys. Wasn't it good? Give them some appreciation. And all I wanted to do was to lead with him. But at the end of the Sunday set, Ryan, here's your songs. There's a pile this long because we couldn't make our mind up. And there's more and more. And I'm putting the songs away. I'm throwing away the old ones. I'm duplicating them. Week by week, wax on, wax off. And I'm saying, God, I just want to lead worship. And here I am on my knees filing a filing cabinet. What's going on? And he said to me, Ryan, I'm teaching you in the mundane. And week by week, I began to realize I was actually learning how to craft a worship set list just by putting away someone else's set list. Week by week, I was putting a song where I realized, hang on, we didn't sing that song. Why didn't we sing that song? Oh, I can see why it didn't fit in spiritually. Oh, I can see why it didn't fit in thematically. Oh, we sang a song that wasn't on the list. Why is the songs not here? Oh, I see God was leading us somewhere. And God was teaching me, even in my wax on, wax off moments, that through steadiness, he brings suddenness. Whatever you're going through right now, keep in a place of faith. Keep in a place of going through it. There are a hundred little victories that are strengthening your feet for the enemy. Why is this so important? It's because character grows in the dark. Yeah. I'll say that again. That's a good point, Ryan. Character grows in the dark. Character is one of the most important things that God is looking to develop in your life in this season. Let me tell you, God loves giftings, and I love the gifts of the Spirit. But there's also something that God has called us to, and that's called the fruit of the Spirit. 
God wants to pour his gifts upon you. And sometimes the gift upon you can feel like a suddenly. All of a sudden, you might be in a life group and you feel like, oh, I need to pray for healing. We had an amazing time in a life group this week where backs were healed, weren't there? There were sudden moments of healing on people's backs. There was gifts of healing that was being released. And we love gifts. God wants us to move in gifts. But I want to remind you, church, fruits are just as important. It's no good having all the gifts of the Spirit, being able to to touch people and heal people if you're a mean person and you've got no love, you've got no patience, you've got no joy. I could go to you and get prayed, but you know what? I want to stay away from that chap. He's mean. What good is it if we have all the gifts in the world but we don't have all the fruit in the world either? In this moment, God is helping us to grow our character. And sometimes... In fact, most of the time, character grows in the dark. What are you talking about in the dark? Let me tell you this. You learn more about yourself through a no than you do through a yes. Anyone had a no said to them this week? A couple people. Think about it. Maybe in the last couple months. Anyone going through a point where they they wanted a yes and all they're left with is a no. And so often we can think, oh, God, I'm, I'm just getting blocked Sometimes God is giving, using the no's in our life to help us grow. There is a no that helps you grow. What is growing? It's your character. I've learned more about myself through the no's than I have with the yeses. I'll use that example again. On my knees, filing cabinet. Can I lead worship now? No, not, not yet. What did I do with that no? Well, I've had it with this church. I'm going somewhere that appreciates me. I was a bit angry, Ryan. What character is God, what fruit is God wanting to grow in you? Let me tell you about fruits. We need the fruits as much as we need the gifts. But fruit trees need good roots. Fruits need roots in order to develop. There's there's an amazing plant that proves this point. It's a bamboo plant. Anyone ever had any struggles with bamboo plants? We had one in struggles. We had struggles. We had one in our garden once. And um, it sort of just sprung up one year. And then by a year later, it had taken over the whole half of the garden. No matter how much you try and take the thing out, its roots are under them. They keep on coming up. Let me tell you about bamboo. Sometimes a bamboo can grow one meter in a day. There is a variety of bamboo in China that can grow one meter tall a day. Can you imagine that? Lord, I want to be growing growth like that. Maybe not just physically, but like, you know, spiritual growth. Emotional growth. I want to grow like that, but they can take three to five years for their root system to be established. You can have a bamboo that's growing in your garden for three to five years. You you wouldn't think anything of it. It's just there, short little looks like a blade of grass, just chilling out. But what you don't know is it is digging its roots down underneath you, and in three to five years, it's going to take over. <laughs> Where's my spiritual bamboo people here this morning? Where, where are you at? Come on, spiritual bamboo people. In the no, I'm going to grow. Lord, let my roots go down so deep. I'm waiting on it suddenly. I'm waiting on it until. But in that place, Lord, I'm going to continue to grow. In that place, Lord, give me your fruit. Whatever knows you're facing. Yeah, that's right. I asked you. You put your hands up. Who's had a no? That no, take it to God, okay? Don't get bitter. Don't get angry. I had a no, no, you can't lead worship yet. You know, okay, what are you growing in me, Lord? What is God growing in you? There are things that God wants to birth. There are things that God wants to grow in your lives. Galatians 6 verse 9. Let me give this to you because it's good. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Who's that for this morning? There's someone here today and you are waiting for your harvest Do not give up. Keep going. Your harvest is coming. There are moments of fullness that are upon you. It's The other thing that we need to do in our our untils is we need to continue to cultivate consistency. I already mentioned about God healing my hand and and being a guitarist. One of the things I did a couple years ago, I was a guitar teacher. And I got to travel around some of the schools in the area teaching guitar lessons to all different age group of kids. And let me tell you, I learned a lot about myself teaching five-year-old girls and boys how to play the guitar. <laughs> Teachers amongst me, amongst the congregation, you're laughing and smiling. You know what I'm talking about. It was a great experience. 
But one of the things that we did is that we, we taught them how to play the scales and all those kind of things. And I realized this. This is so important. One of the things about scales and playing an instrument is you have to practice. You can't just pull up on a stage and start playing and thinking that all of a sudden the gifting will hit you. And it's happened to one person that I know of in the world. They had a gift downloaded from them where they could play music. But normally, we have to practice. And in the practice is where you grow. And you can't just get up there without practicing and doing your scales. And I would teach these kids how to do their scales, and they would all hate their scales because nobody liked practicing. But then they'd watch me play and be like, can I do that? And I'd say, yeah, you can play like me, but you have to do this first. Oh, I don't want to do my scales. That was the high school kids. Oh, I don't want to do my scales. Oh. <laughs> I'm having fun, even if you guys aren't. But, <laughs> you know, he's doing his, you know. So, so I'd watch them do their scales, and they'd go away and they'd practice, and maybe I would have a holiday one week, and I'd come back, and they'd say, yes, Ryan, I've done my scales. And they'd play them for me. And do you know what they were doing? They were practicing them wrong. And what they were doing is they were reinforcing their mistakes by continual practice. And it's really important that we get this word of God in us in our until moments because God doesn't want you to go around practicing your mistakes. He wants you to learn from your mistakes. He wants you to grow. And when the moment comes where he brings fullness, you, know, you say, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm ready for this because I've been working through my scales. I've been working through this life with me. The world's been throwing no's at me, but I've been on my knees with you. The world's been throwing difficulties at me, but I've been in my word with you. The world's been throwing character at me, but I've been growing with you. And stay close to Jesus. Stay in the place where he is cultivating you and he's growing consistency in you. It's consistency that brings a breakthrough. I hadn't planned this, but I just want to boast on my wife for a minute. This is the most, we're coming, you're coming into, and the, as a result, Revival Fires and the church is coming into, and I want to share this with you. I know I said I want to boast on my wife. I do. But I want you to hear this because this is your harvest too, friends, okay? Come on, tell the person next to you, this is your harvest. This is your harvest. We have been a church in this, in this location since 2006. That's how long we've been here. Don't ask me. I'm not good at maths. I didn't practice my maths as a kid. I should have practiced it. I'm practicing my scales the whole time. It's a long time, since 2006. And year after year, God has been putting on us a heart for the community. I mean, it's part of our vision statement that we would be presence-centered, people-focused, community-oriented. We're here for the community. And we've never stopped reaching out every opportunity. When I say we, I mean Anna. She's been the one who, who, and the team who goes to council meetings, who shows up week in, week out, shows up and says, is there anything we can do to help? And it takes a long time for people to begin to trust you. Even if we keep coming, and Anna showed up year after year, moment after moment, um, meeting after meeting, and then lockdown hit, and it was Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting. And let me tell you, one hour on Zoom is like five hours everywhere else. <laughs> For me, it is, okay. Some of you love this whole work at home thing. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and just kept showing up moment by moment, kept believing that God is going to lift the hiddenness off of the ministry, not for the sake of the ministry, but because God has given us something that we can do to help our community. Moment by moment, and let me tell you, in the last two months, I don't know if you shared all of this, Anna. Anna, and the, the, as a result of the work of the team here, was invited to go down to London, the city of London, y'all. You shared some of it. Go into the House of Parliament, the House of Lords. Right? Go and do a conference on um, well-being and churches helping their community. Where they gathered leaders, key church leaders from all over the UK. And guess who was a keynote speaker? My wife. <laughs> the staff here, Anna was up on the stage preaching. And as she was preaching, we were getting emails to the office. Can I please book an appointment with Anna Baker Barnes? In fact, can, you know, can I please find out? Look, isn't this right, Janet? I mean, and you think, wow, overnight success. <laughs> we think, God, thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for giving us the faith and the hope to keep going at every single step along the way. Because this is what God can do. And I want you, you've already nudged your neighbor and said, this is your harvest. Here's your harvest. God is lifting the lid off of things here. 
But also, your continuing is going to bring forth, if you do not give up in its proper time, a full harvest. And Jesus, I'm so grateful for what you're doing, not because we want to be well known, but because we've carried, even like Joshua, we've carried a call that there is something on our lives that can help other people. And as God is doing that, that's what's happening. So I love that. Don't give up on your consistency. Don't waste your mistakes. Joshua got things wrong. Let me tell you, he did. David got things wrong. Let me tell you, he did. Everyone in the Bible got things wrong. Why? Because we get things wrong. And when we read about their life, we see the redemptive nature of our God so strongly. And I want you to know, never waste your mistake. This very moment that we read about in Joshua chapter 10, where his foot was on the neck of the enemy. Do you know how it happened? He made a big mistake. Another nation, another tribe came up to him and they... They made it look as if they had come from a far way away, the Gibeonites. They had put dried, stale bread in their bags, and they had put on worn-out worn out clothes on stead, instead of normal clothes. And they came on their donkey, and they said, Oh, we've come from a long way away. We've been told to practice our scales, and we're here. And the people of God thought that they were from a long way away, but really they were their neighbors. And they wanted to make an, a treaty with them. They wanted to make an oath. Please, don't. Whenever you come to our land, it'll be a long time. Whenever you come to our land, let's make a treaty together. And Joshua didn't consult the Lord God. He took everything that he saw on face value, shallow face value. Let me tell you, friends, is probably the most shallow value. God wants you to go deep. God wants you to take everything and pray. Take your nose. Take those th places where you grow. Take it to him. Take it to Jesus. And they made a treaty. And then these guys threw off their clothes and like, ha ha, we live just next door to you, you know. So it was a big mistake. It was a big error. The nation was in uproar. The nation was really, really grieved and saddened by this because they couldn't have full victory over the land that God had called them to possess. But what happened was, because that had happened, five kings all banded up and attacked the Gibeonites, these people who were fakers. And haters. They all came and attacked them. And God said, I'm going to turn a mistake into a blessing. Now is your time, Joshua. Go and attack them. And what was an error actually worked out to bring all of the enemies together in one place where Joshua could go and defeat them. I want to tell you, don't waste your mistakes. Don't give up. Don't give up praying. Don't give up believing. Don't give up pressing on. Even if you've tripped and fallen. I know we joked about those steps in the skinny jean. And there's things that we're going through in our lives that we find difficult. And we feel like we're always falling short. We're always tripping up. We're always missing the mark. That's what sin is. Sin is as simple as that. It's missing the mark. And then we retreat within to ourselves. And we withdraw. And we don't continue. And I want you to know, God is a God of love. God is a God of the second chance. Oh, but Ryan, I've done it three times wrong. God is a God of the third chance. In fact, God is a God of the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. You can keep going. How do you know that, Ryan? Because he says, when Peter asks him, how many times should I forgive my brother? He says, and Peter says, I'm going to choose a big number. Seven times? And God says, no, 77 times, seven. You keep going. You see, for God with his redemptive nature, you might continue to be coming up against something that's causing you to strip, to trip and to fall. For God, it's a sec he's a God of the second chance. It might be the 27th time, but it's a second chance because he's a God of love. Can we just talk about sin for a minute? You know, I love going. What the world needs out there isn't just talk about sin. They need the kindness of God. Because the Bible says it's the kindness of God that leads them to repentance. But let me tell you this. That doesn't mean that in the church we just gloss over sin. Jesus is Lord, and there's times in our lives when we've fallen short and not crowned him Lord in certain situations. And in the church, God wants to come with such strong conviction. I said conviction. I didn't say condemnation. You see, condemnation is what's preached out there. Condemnation is what people put on you to make you feel guilty and judge. Condemnation is the work and the fruit of the devil. But conviction is different. Conviction says, I've sinned. 
But I don't need to be afraid of sin. Why? Because Ryan preached and he told me that Jesus has defeated the enemy in the heavens, on earth, and under the earth. And even my sin underneath the earth has been brought under judgment. And if I can come and say, Lord, forgive me, guess what he says? You are forgiven. Sin has been defeated. One of the enemies that I believe for us as a body of Christ, even this week, that we're going to put our foot on their necks is sin. Let me try this side. I believe one of the enemies that we're going to put underneath our feet this week is sin. Sin loses its hold on you. Shame loses its hold on you. Blame loses its hold on you. Guilt loses its hold on God's people. Anything that is condemnation of the, of the, den, of the enemy loses its hold on people. Lord, we want to come into a place where we're so free of sin because sin is dealt with. Sin is defeated. And I can say, yes, I need a second chance, Lord Jesus. That's what God wants to do. Let me tell you this about, we're going to finish in a minute. What we're going to do to end this morning, what a great morning has been in your presence, Jesus. What we're going to do is we're going to share communion. And as we share communion, I want you to take the bread and the wine that represent the body, the body and the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, in my until, I'm going to remain consistent. Lord, in my until, I'm not going to give up. Lord, in my until, keep me free from sin. You see what happens in the mundane? is that the enemy wants to come and put traps and temptations of sin in your path. Because he knows that if he can get you to trip up and to fall and to feel real bad, you won't feel as hopeful and faithful about the, the journey that God's got you on. That can get removed this morning. That can get totally put out of the way. And that's what we're going to do when we come and share communion. God is, we're going to be reminded that Jesus is Lord, yeah. but he's Lord of my life. That means he's Lord of my failures. That means he's Lord of my trip-ups and my sin. I was going to talk about idolatry. We won't do that this morning. Maybe another time. Listen, it's the most freeing uh, book, that I, message that I've read in the last couple of months. This message on idolatry. You can say, oh, Ryan, we don't have idols. We do. They're just really subtle. <laughs> and in their subtleness, they entrap us. But the way that we step into them, first and foremost, is sin. And I want you to know sin has been judged. But that means you can live in freedom. The enemy, the serpent, the snake, our enemy, the devil, he comes and slithers into our lives and he wants to cause us to sin. Do you know why? Let me tell you like this. A serpent has no arms and it has no feet. Because Jesus has disarmed the enemy and he has defeated the enemy in every single area of our lives. But... Anytime we sin, we rearm the enemy and we give him legal territory over ground that he doesn't even have feet to own. But through the sin in our lives, we give it back to him. And God says, listen, friends, listen, my, my children, I have judged the enemy. He is disarmed and defeated. I like that. And every time I come to that, like, Lord, I want to live my life under your lordship because I want every place where I tread my foot to be ground for you to possess. I want to live underneath your lordship because I want to be your hands and your feet. Did you realize, let me tell you this, I'm going to end with this. I know you guys have been good. I'm still talking, but I'm going to end with this. Psalm 110. Let's just read, let's just think about it again. Read it again. If it wants to come up, it can come up. Thank you so much, so much Pauline. The Lord, Jehovah, said to my Lord, Adonai, sit at my right hand until I make the enemies a footstool. Hands and feet. There it is again. He has disarmed the enemy. He has defeated the enemy. But what the enemy wants to do by causing us to fall into sin, to fall into temptation, to fall into shame, is to rearm him over the situations in our lives. And as a body, we're coming this morning and saying, Jesus, Thank you that every enemy to your name has been defeated. Thank you that every enemy to your name in my life has been judged. Thank you that every hindrance, even in the until moments in my life, can be removed because of the blood. Yeah. Oh, the blood, the precious blood on the cross of Jesus Christ. So we're going to continue not to waste our mistakes. Not to live in any shame. Not to live in any rejection. To continue to praise on the way. And to come into places of breakthrough. I want to invite you. Would you stand up with me? We're just going to set this up right now. For a moment where we can thank God. And we can come into victory. Life group leaders come and grab. 
a, a tray of uh, communion and get ready to share it with the body this morning. There's going to be life group leaders at the back. There's going to be life group leaders at the front. And the way we're going to do this is just take a bit of time. The worship team dude is going to just have some music for us to worship, to contemplate, to keep your focus on God in these moments. To keep your focus. And as you come up, I just want you to get real with God. As we take the bread and as we take the wine this morning, you say, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. Jesus, there is nothing that I withhold from you this morning. There is no area of my life that I don't give you permission to go into. There's been places in my life through shame that I've held back. There's been places in my life through disappointment. No, life group leaders, they're going to come to the front. Come, come. Everyone's going to come and take from you. <laughs> we'll get it right. I want you to come forward, you see. I want you to know what it is to come forward and to receive. Let me just read you the scripture then. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So just put your hand on your heart, everyone this morning, and say, Jesus, I give you my life every area as I'm waiting for the until give me your faith give me your strength and as I come receive communion today be the Lord of my life amen so just stay in this moment there's going to be some worship there's going to be some things that you work through with God even as I've been speaking he's been highlighting certain things in your life just Take that moment to pray with him, to let him speak to you, to let him communicate with you. While you also come up and, and feel free now to come, come and receive the bread and the wine, but also turn around because there's people at the back. They might be closer to you. That might be quicker. So come on, come on forward. Let's receive the bread and the wine this morning. Come on forward. Come and receive it. Just pray for them as you, as you give it up. Pray for everyone who comes. Put your hands on them. Just release that prayer. Stand together. Any areas where the enemy needs to be disarmed, stand together with them. We break, we say freedom. Freedom over your people this morning, Lord Jesus. it off in Jesus' name. From their head to their toes, free in Jesus' name.
everyone had communion, if you're still waiting, come on up and receive. Like I said at the start, if you've given your life to Jesus, you belong to the body. You might not be a member at Revival Fights, that's fine. You're welcome. Come and receive the bread. Come and receive the wine. Come and receive what Jesus has done for us. And I know kids and youth are coming through, so... invite you just all stand up let's sing the simple chorus just to Jesus as we end this morning yeah let's sing it out oh the blood of Jesus Jesus for your blood. Thank you that you truly have disarmed and defeated every enemy. And I release over your body today, over your church. Let them be those who know what it is to walk in victory today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. Have a fantastic week. Coffee shops open. Feel free to